right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the men's study here on Tuesday at Calvary Chapel Open Door. Today we'll be in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to go through verses 14 to 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 to 19. And so let us read these verses. It says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words, to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymnius and Philutius are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this, this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Lord, we thank You for this time, Lord, that You would Lord, speak to us through Your Word, and know it Your Word, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to receive what You would have us to understand today, Lord, by the power of Your Holy Spirit. We thank You, we praise You, in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> So over here, Paul is continuing to exhort Timothy to stay in the ministry and uh, to stay strong in the ministry, not to pull back, but to keep going strong, serving the Lord. You know, a few times Paul, he has spoken to Timothy some imperative command, commandments, like be strong in the Lord, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Over here, he's telling him to be diligent and to keep your focus on the main thing. That's why we titled this message, The Main Thing is to Keep the Main Thing, the Main Thing, which is the Gospel. And so over here, Timothy was prone uh, to, to get distracted. So there would be many things would distract Timothy, and especially things that would come from false doctrines and false teachers. And uh, Paul, he knew very well about uh, these types of attacks and these types of distractions. And so he was, he's warning Timothy and he's encouraging him to keep the focus. What is the focus? Is to keep the gospel and to stay on that track. Uh, and, uh, and that is very crucial for us that we don't get distracted, but we don't lose the focus on the gospel and on the lost people. Um, and so over here, Paul, he is. He's uh, encouraging Timothy uh, to keep the focus on the gospel. And, uh, and the, other, the thing is, there are some things will, will distract us. Right? And he, he's going to mention you know, some of these very important things that will distract us from the proper uh, focus <coughs> on the gospel. And the first one is to get involved in useless arguments. In useless discussions and as a minister of Jesus Christ minister of the gospel you have to be aware not to get entangled with these type of uh, uh, arguments that will will have no benefit and will not edify and so that's what uh, Paul is encouraging Timothy and that's what he says in verse 14 it says remind them of these things charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearer. And, and it's interesting here, the commandment is to remind, to be reminded, and also to remind the believers. And so many times, that's all we need to be, all we, that's what we need is to be reminded. Our mind is like a, as a leaking vessel. And uh, we need to always, you know, <laughs> Uh, fill them back with, with the truth, with the word of God. We don't really necessarily need a new thing. We just need to be reminded of the old thing, but which is the, the, the gospel, the Christian message. Um, and so over here, that's what Paul is, is asking Timothy, to remind the believers uh, uh, to endure and to be committed uh, to, to the Christian message, to the gospel, and not to stray from it. Uh, he told them, charging them before God. And this is a very important uh, 
commandments. He's telling them, charge them in the, in the presence of God, uh, as God functioning as witness, that we have responsibility, we, has, we have received the truth, and we have to be committed to the truth. This is uh, what he also told them back in 1 Timothy 5.21. He says, Paul, he told Timothy, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudges, doing nothing with partiality. And uh, it's interesting here that, you know, uh, when he told them, I charge, the, charge you in the presence of God. This is very important the truth here that God is observing us. God, He's the enabler. He enables us to to uh, to serve Him. At the same time, he's, he's observing what we are doing, right? And this is very uh, crucial. He says, "In the presence of the Almighty God," He told them, "Remind them not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearer. Uh, not to strive. This is basically remind them not to fight over words." You ever been in that situation, fighting over the interpretation of words, what these words mean? Um, and he's telling him uh, this type of argument, this type of strife, uh, it has no profit. It has no use uh, to to what God really wants to do in our lives. Then he says something very significant. To the ruin of the hearer. That word ruin, it means catastrophe. It means destruction. It's not just no use. It's actually it's doing the opposite. It's really destroying things if we allow these things to happen. Uh, yes, it is true that there are some times when we, uh, we have to study God's word. We have to uh, discuss it and stuff like that. But uh, it has to be in the, in the realm of edification, of really studying God's word for the purpose of edification, but not for the purpose of proving you, you are wrong, and proving me I am right, and all of these types of, of uh, arguments that has no value. Uh, so he's telling him, do not engage in these types of uh, arguments. Avoid uh, this type of conflict over doubtful Issues. There are, you know, people come up with so many things that you could argue with in the Word of God, <coughs> right? And, and so sometimes they just love, people love that aspect of argument, right? And uh, so many times you should be able to sense that and to really not to go through that path. Um, but here Paul is specifically <coughs> targeting a specific group of, pe of people, and these are false teachers, you know, false teachers, they love these type of things, right, uh, uh, and they, the, the way they do it is, you know, they try to interpret the word of God in a specific way that aligns with their, with their agenda. Uh, one example of that, that Paul, Paul had to address is, there was some false teachers that are trying to cause the Christian believers to obey the Jewish laws, if you if you remember uh, in the scriptures, and uh, and really Paul he addressed that because these types of argument will lose the focus and will it has no place in in the uh, among the believers. So it it is very crucial, you know what I'm learning is that uh, from this text it is very crucial that uh, we have the proper interpretation of the word of God. You know, wrong interpretation is very destructive. You know, that's why it takes a lot of cautious and, and effort to really go before the Lord. Lord, I want to interpret your word properly and accurately. Right? People take it, they give the wrong interpretation, and it will destroy things. And that's what Paul, he's, he's uh, trying to uh, ensure Timothy doesn't go into that path. And again, everything that we do, is should be for the purpose of edification. Right? That's the commandment is that we edify uh, one another. And you know, false teachers they don't have that goal. Right? Their goal is not to edify. Their goal is what prove themselves right. 
prove themselves right, prove their point of view right. And so that is, um, uh, that's their goal, is not really to, uh, to uh, edify. And that's why, you know, false teaching is very destructive um, and uh, it should be very, uh, we should be very cautious about that. So in, in verse 15 it says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So in the previous verse, he told them, you know, an imperative commandment not to do these, do not go into that path of, of uh, arguing and, and getting into these type of destructive discussions, but really he's telling him what he ought to do. What, what is he ought to do? What are you ought, what am I ought to do is to be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Um, so what does be diligent mean? You know, the word diligent, when I looked it up, it means to be earnest, to be eager. Right? Um, and the opposite of, of diligent is neglect, forgetful, laziness, and delay. But the imperative here is we ought to be earnest. Uh, the, the commandment here is to be diligent, to make every effort to do your best. And that is, the, the, the idea here is that whatever we do for the Lord, we have to give it our best effort uh, in, in, in serving the Lord. Being diligent means to desire eagerly to please God. That's very important that you know, we're not here to please men. We're here to please God. And that should be the, our ultimate goal in everything that we do, uh, especially when we are studying and obeying His Word. Uh, so here, He's telling him, be diligent for the Lord. And what I find out that, you know, if we are diligent for the Lord, this becomes our safeguard in, in our walk with the Lord. That's our ultimate goal: is to really please the Lord, right? Then, then we are in the right path. But if we deviate from that ultimate goal, to diligent, diligently seeking the Lord, then we'll we'll be able we'll be prone, very significantly, to fall into uh, into traps of the enemy. And so here is the the commandment: here, be diligent, spare no effort, do your best. Uh, this is a call to act immediately, decisively, with zeal in, in serving the Lord. So how would you describe be diligent to present yourself to God from your own perspective? Be diligent to be in His Word every single morning. Mm -hmm. Consistent. Focus. Focus. What else? To me, diligent means you're uh, you're uh, you're, you're um, focused and committed to do the best you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, the key word here is the best. Yeah. Uh, and that's why you know when it comes to God, we cannot live in medi mediocrity or in a mediocre way, right? Uh, we have to give Him our best. And that's why he told him to present yourself approved to God. Uh, and that is to present yourself mean, meaning to make your uh, most effort, your supreme ambition to please, to please God. Um, and this is what makes a true worker, a true servant different from the false teachers, right? Uh, a true worker is the life and the work that we do must be always oriented toward God and toward His mission. Uh, and like we said, the, the false teachers, their, their goal or their orientation is for what? They're looking for to people to get their approval, to get them on their side. But God's servants, really, we ought to always seek the approval of, of God. Um, so what does orienting ourselves toward God involves. It involves really active, 
conscious decision to remain true to the gospel, to remain true to the gospel. So what does that mean, to remain true to the gospel? Like it was talking in other verses about staying, staying focused, not paying attention to the outside noise, mm -hmm. just being focused on the gospel, what the gospel actually is. Yes. That Christ died on the cross for us. He raised in three days. <coughs> That's right. Anything other than that is not the, not the gospel. Mm -hmm. The verse I have here that you're reading right now has a little different phrasing. It says, "Rightly dividing." the word of truth, which of course what this is. And I think that sometimes, like you were saying earlier, the uh, people will come in and try to subject their audience to a perverted mm -hmm. view or, or just actually how it turns out is destructive, but in the meantime, it's just wrong. You know, it's just not what this saying is so mm -hmm. rightly dividing and sometimes they'll mix things together you know, take this yeah. verse and this verse and tell their story <coughs> me. and uh, it'll be the wrong story because they're misappropriating the word yeah. yeah and that is very crucial here is to really to remain true to the to the uh, pure message which is the gospel right to remain uh, faithful to it in, in teaching it the proper way, in proclaiming the gospel. And also, we have responsibility to be living according to the gospel, right? So it's, it's a both way, in proclaiming it, teaching it, and also in living it according to the gospel. And I believe this is the test that faces all God's servants, right? Uh, he's talking about God's, you know, God's approval here, to present yourself approved to God. And so God's approval really would rest upon the one who passes this test. Is passing really your commitment to the gospel, teaching it, proclaiming it, and really living according. And that's why 2 Corinthians 10, 18 says, For not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the world commends. Right? Uh, you know, the, the idea here is that we were trying to <clears throat> commend ourselves or approve ourselves or I'm trying to, to uh, force myself to be approved but here God who is the one who approves us right so we just let it he, he, he sees our hearts and he, he approves us but our responsibility is to stay committed to the gospel then he says a worker who does not need to be ashamed a worker who does not need to be ashamed God's worker and servant <coughs> Really, we ought to demonstrate unashamed commitment to God and to the gospel. For I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that has to be demonstrated. Then he says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And the idea here is God's servant, we are, we, it takes an effort, it takes you know, uh, God's enablement for us to accurately to understand to study God's word and to transmit that God, God's message properly, right? Um, and that is very crucial. Uh, you know, these days many people could, you know, profess that they're, they're teaching the gospel, but really the gospel, like you said, Jim, it has a very <coughs> precise content, right? And and without that precise content, you're not really preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so here, Paul, he wants to ensure Timothy to present the gospel without distorting it or pervert, perverting it. Um, he was not to be turned aside by false teachers or false or strange, I wrote, wrote down this strange doctrine, you know, how many times you, you hear strange things, and that should, you know, if something comes across to you as strange, that's a flag, right, this is strange, this is something new, this is, you know, people come up all sorts of things, and that's where we get all these cults and all these, you know, uh, uh, 
situations around us. People are, are going after strange doctrines, strange, you know, things uh, they believe that that is not really uh, uh, the proper and the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And also an, an approved workman, approved servant, is the one is able to discern false doctrine. We have to be able to, to discern that this doctrine does not is not right, is not healthy, is not is not part of the counsel of God, and uh, and we have to be, you know, if we are in God's word, if we are filled with His Holy Spirit, He gives us that discernment that this is not right. And so here the idea, the word of God is a treasure for us. It's like the soldier's sword, is the farmer's seed, like what he was uh, discussing in previous verses. But it's also the workman's tool for really building, for measuring, for repairing our life and the life of God's people. And again, interpreting God's word properly is very, very crucial. Misinterpretation, it brings forth destruction. Um, and that is very, that's what he's emphasizing here, Paul. Verse 16 says, but shun profane and idle dabbling, for they will increase to more ungodliness. So again, to keep our focus on the gospel, there are, there are some things we ought not to do. We are, we are not to uh, strive about, you know, uh, about words that has no profit. And verse 16 here, he tells us to shun profane and idle dabblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Um, and so here, Paul is encouraging Timothy to really have a positive contribution against the fight of this false teaching. And the way he does that, by continually to keep away from this shun, to, be, to, to shun away, that means to, to keep away from uh, godless chatter. Uh, it means to avoid. Uh, it means that Timothy had to continually be alert to the threat of heresy and the threat of this strange doctrine. And he says, but shun profane. What does profane mean? It means godless. Right? It shows that the debate of the heretics had nothing to do with real godliness. It's just part of an argument, intellectual, maybe it could be intellectual argument. He says, but shun profane and idle babblings. Uh, this Paul is giving him the picture that uh, this this argument, this babbling, it is aim aimless. It is empty. There is no end result to it. It just you're going into circles, right? There is no end result of of godliness. I would tend to disagree a little bit with that. Yeah. It's not just a circle. It's a spiral going down because yes. it leads further down and the more you get involved with it, the more pervert you get yes. and the more ungodly you get. Actually, you are very 100% right because the next statement says, for they will increase to more ungodliness, right? Uh, this means, you know, the reason he's telling him to avoid these foolish discussion because they will lead to progress, like you said, Bob, in the wrong direction. <coughs> Actually gonna lead into the progress of, of wrong direction and you're gonna lose the, the, uh, the benefit of the truth. Um, and this is also saying that really false teachers internally and in themselves, they will not develop or increase, increase in godliness, but it's the opposite. They're always going to really develop into their private life, into their way of doing. They're really living in ungodliness. You know, it's very easy to, to carry on this, you know, uh, outward appearance, but really internally they are increasing in ungodliness. Uh, and so that's what Paul is warning Timothy. Verse 17, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymnius and Lithius are of this sort. Uh, and so over here he gives him, he gives him an example, right? Um, 
that there was opposing teachers uh, who had these two people who had what different interpretation of matters pertaining to the resurrection right? and so many times these <coughs> false teachers and false teachers they have you know different interpretation about a specific subject right and so and again i want to keep emphasizing the wrong interpretation of scripture is destructive uh, and so he's telling them they, they, the way we interpret and present it, again, like I mentioned, it is very important. Uh, it's interesting, he's, he, Paul, he told them their message will spread like cancer. Right? What does this emphasize? Their message will spread like cancer. Quick. <laughs> Quick. Well, it's it dangerous. It's it terminal. It's terminal. It's terminal yeah. and kill yeah. you. Yeah. So that's why Paul's doctrine is dangerous. Uh, Paul's doctrine will spread and infect the body of the believers, which is the church. And so that's why it is very, very dangerous. So we have to be as servants of the Lord, be able to uh, to identify it. We should be able to expose it and remove it, because only sound doctrine which is the Word of God, the proper interpretation of the Word of God, it's going to keep the church healthy, and it's going to keep the church growing. And, and it is very crucial. Uh, and that's why, you know, it's, we have to be, as a servant of the Lord, we have to be diligently and consistently studying God's Word so that we accurately interpret it and apply it first to our life before we ask people to apply it to their life right we first we have you know we need as god gives us the privilege to teach god's word first we have to study it we have to see how it's applying to my life first how the holy spirit using my experiences in life and how it's you know you know uh, revealing the true interpretation of it and then we can apply it to to our to the hearers so you know Studying and, and learning that studying the Word of God is not just focusing on, you know, uh, on the text or the history of it or the technicality of it. It's really got to do a lot with how we apply it and how the Lord allows us to experience it first in, in our life. Then verse 18 says, Who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some, and they overthrow the faith of some. And here Paul again is dealing with and warning against false teachers, and uh, uh, he's identifying their errors here, and he's giving them some, you know, this concrete example, uh, because they thought that salvation really is a resurrection in a spiritual sense, uh, but they didn't maybe expect that there is really physical uh, resurrection. Uh, again, the denial of a physical resurrection, according to the Word of God, is really a serious error. Right? Because the Bible in both, when you study it in both Testaments, uh, Old and New, promises that the dead will rise. And there's you know, uh, scriptures confirming that. Um, even Jesus in John 11, 25 says, Jesus said to her, to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Who believes in me, who he may, though he may die, he shall live. And 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, And the dead in Christ will rise first. Right? So there is you know, a physical resurrection for our bodies. And so again, he's just giving them this example of, of, uh, of a serious errors. And uh, again, because they had the wrong interpretation. Verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ de depart from iniquity. You know, the idea here, he, Paul is telling Timothy, uh, you know, Timothy, do not get shaken. Do not let your confidence get shaken 
because of these false teachers, right? Uh, you know, how many times you, you face, you know, uh, people following the, the wrong doctrine, right? And they have their, they're just, their brain is brainwashed with specific argument and they come across that they know everything, right? They're so smart and stuff like that. But, uh, uh, but he's telling him, do not be shaken by their, their argument, right? Be firm in what you believe. Uh, he's telling him here the solid foundation here is telling him that the foundation here is, is the house of God. It is the, sh the church. Uh, uh, God stands, means it is safe, secure, because God seal, seals it and he is confirming it. Um, then he told them, the Lord knows them that are his. The Lord knows those who are his. Actually here, Paul, he's quoting Moses in number 16. In five, and he says, "The Lord knoweth them that are His." Um, and here, he just wants to uh, ensure that Timothy's confidence is not shaken. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Um, and over here again, the warning is to really follow the truth, depart from following uh, iniquity or following these false doctrines. Um, and again, many of these false doctrines, they really, they, they follow it because they find their pleasure in it. Uh, it it uh, aligns with their way of life. They don't want to repent. They don't want to follow the truth, so their life will be changed. They're follow, following these, these wrong doctrines. Um, and so over here, he's telling him that everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Uh, and so over here, let our life really be proved by God, by really living a godly life. And the Lord, he in Matthew 7, 16, says, you will know them by their fruits. Right? Our life manifests the fruit of godliness in our life. And so here is the, the imperative for us here. It's uh, simple. is to really be aware of strange doctrines, false doctrines. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you know, you're, you're scrolling on social media. You might be hearing some, some, uh, some of these false doctrines. You might be talking to people. Uh, so it's important to to be able to discern and to stay in the truth. But most importantly for us, I believe, is is verse you know 15 uh, when he says, "Be diligent." To present yourself approved to God and a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. To be diligent in seeking our our Lord, seeking His calling for our life, orienting our goal according to God's uh, calling over our life, and really being consistent and diligent in God's word. Right? If we are not in God's word, if we're not diligent in studying it, we will astray. Because I believe you know, there is a strong um, push these days to, to false and strange doctrines, even in the evangelical circle. Mm -hmm. When you start really seeing what's happening, there is some strange you know, things trying to, uh, you know, subtle things trying to you know, infect the gospel of Jesus Christ. And especially in, uh, in really adapting to the culture we live in. Uh, they're trying to water down the gospel in such a way it does not offend people or it, they do not mention the word hell or sin, you know. It's becoming, it's just presenting it, modifying it, so it fit our culture. But it should be the opposite. We should bring the culture to the gospel, but not we, we modify the gospel according to the, to the culture we live in. And so that's very, very crucial. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Pastor Don, you want to close us in prayer? Yes. Well, Lord, we're just thankful and grateful for this day, Lord. And um, Lord, it is very important that we rightly divide the Word, the word of God, Lord. Um, there are so many groups out there that will take a fraction of a verse or a portion of Scripture and they'll just create into their own doctrine, Lord. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the Scriptures. But... Um, 
we have to be prepared to, to understand that and to be able to discern when there's a good doctrine and bad doctrine. So Lord, thank you for this message that you know uh, Paul gave Timothy, Lord. It's so important for us to take it to heart and to, uh, to remain firm and stand upon the true gospel, not some version that's brought to, into the world to try to make things comfortable for people, Lord. Uh, so many times I hear people want to say they want to have a gospel that's that's modern and for the modern day and it's the same gospel that was preached back when you walked the earth Lord it's, you can't modernize it it's the same as what it should be it's just <coughs> you died and you rose again and, and uh, you, you saved sinners and so Lord help us for that Lord help us be faithful in Jesus name we pray Amen God bless you everyone